has access to advice from the attorney general, and it would be a due process problem to prosecute a president who received advice from the attorney general that his actions were lawful, absent the kind of collusion or conspiracy that itself represented a criminal violation, which I don't really see as being a realistic well, option. And then if I could say... So I've been just last few minutes listening to what they've been talking about here. And definitely there's political bias from both political sides on these judges, but the ones that are liberally aligned do not seem to understand that what they are pushing for will set the precedent that would allow criminal prosecution of Obama for extrajudicial killings of American citizens outside of United States borders or completely open up the possibility of uh, criminal prosecution without impeachment of Joe Biden for corruption. And Clarence Thomas just asked, There were previous examples of presidents participating in similar activities to what they're accusing Trump of and a number of illegal acts that presidents were connected with versus through secret operations. He referred to Operation Mongoose, which I'm going to have to look up and refresh because I don't remember what that was about. And why weren't these also prosecuted, which is the question I have been asking since about 2005 when I was, you know, made aware of all these things to that level. I'm waking things up at 2003, but by 05 was where I was asking questions like that. I've been asking questions like that. The only answer I ever got was there's a process they have to go through and they have to impeach and convict first before you can do anything else. Now that we're getting to the point where they've attempted to impeach, they've failed to convict on January 6th stuff. You can't really prosecute him for anything relating to January 6th. Now they're going into oral arguments here. Meanwhile, he's got an Arizona state case where a legitimate objection and an alternate slate of electors, which is totally normally part of the process from what I understand and has happened in just about every election that has taken place for the presidency, certainly in my lifetime and longer than that going back that this has been part of the practice, but now they are going to prosecute one guy for using it. That's, that's so uneven. That is so completely imbalanced. Either it should have already been taken care of, or obviously it's not a thing. And it disturbs me that this is what the top, <clears throat> top judicial argumentation at the moment is about. Now, while it's good that they're even taking the case, it's bad because this is the state that our country is in, our society, that we have a criminal operating criminally and incompetently in office. And because of the congressional capture and ideological tribalism, of Congress, no ability to um, process an impeachment and run the trial will happen, right? That won't happen. It can't happen. Why? Because too many people are bought out in the side of Congress that has to put the thing together and the people that are there don't seem to be able to do much, but like they can gather the facts, but they can't assemble the fact pattern. Jim Jordan's really good at listing off all these facts, but is, is he good at putting together an argument as to exactly why rather than just a fact pattern? And no one's doing anything. Obviously, the Speaker of the House is an issue too. While all that's happening, you have a Senate that is controlled by the opposing party from the people that would be putting together impeachment. So they can't get rid of the guy that's making the border worse. They, this, it's all intentional. It's not like these guys don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They all do. 
And anybody who doesn't is a patsy for people who do know what they're doing. Everything that's going on is intentional. So then we watch the Supreme Court also just sit there and talk about a bunch of hypotheticals. And they're trying to, you know, all the ones with any slight liberal bias are definitely trying to make it so that it's like, well, okay, but what if a president did some Hitler stuff? And it's like, bro, none of that happened. This is not relevant. And then you got the ones on the right side. They're like, okay, what about the other ones? Yeah, bro, what about the other ones? You guys have been in law for a very long time. Why has this never come up sooner? Oh, well, I, I mean, what it ultimately comes to is a president assigns an attorney general. They appoint them. And that attorney general makes all the decisions based on what the president advises. So if the president or someone with the president's official signature behind it tells the attorney general, don't prosecute, they don't prosecute. And if they tell them to prosecute, they prosecute. The fact that it's state level people trying to prosecute is kind of hilarious because that means that anybody should be able to sue any, any uh, federal politician, U.S. government politicians should be, all, all positions, offices, representatives should be suable by the individual person then by the same reasoning. So because the system is the system, it should not work both ways. It should only work one way. And whatever way that it's working is the way that it should work for everyone. Stupid like that. It should be better than that. But that's what it is, apparently. I mean, they're saying they're deciding whether or not, you know, presidents have immunity. But really what they're coming to here is that. Uh, are we going to allow the government to remain corrupt and continue to be corrupt and we're going to do absolutely nothing about it? Or are we going to sacrifice a candidate running for president in order to make the system work for everyone? But the people in charge of the system right now will not do that. They only want the one guy prosecuted. They won't prosecute everyone. Therefore, the outcome of this decision and all the other trials to do with the former president really come down to determination as to whether or not to boogaloo the government. That's what it comes down to. It's terrible. It sucks. This is ridiculous. I don't need to be thinking about this shit. I got to go to work. But think about the future. Think about your kids. Think about their freedom. Think about what the world will look like if these people are allowed to continue running amok being criminals, being corrupt, starting wars for profit, destroying civilizations, ruining countries for gain, for political gain or for profit motives. If, the, if they're allowed to continue doing that, there is no future. You might as well stop having kids because the ones that you do have are doomed. This is why. This is why it's an important conversation to have. And if booging these people out and replacing them with people with integrity or going back to a way of living that does not involve having an overarching set of rules attempting to govern everyone, maybe life will be better in general for more people. Because right now it seems like we're just uh, increasing the suffering level while talking about how the suffering level keeps going up. And we wish it would do the opposite, but we just keep turning it up. <laughs> 